Hello everybody. I hope you're doing good. Hey Matnat. Hi Elaine, glad you made it. Hi Sonia. Hi Sharon. Hi Adelaide. Hi Kim. So, uh, I thought of showing you how to make a few awesome cabochons using UV resin. We, I know we didn't visit resin in quite a while. And um, once again, uh, I want to remind you that I do have an Amazon influencer store. And and get you the link directly and we'll go and look so you can see where to find things hi Jana hi Darla so let's get on the display so uh, if you go to my influencer store I had to divide the resin thing in two because it wouldn't uh, Amazon has a certain limit on how many items you can have in one list so if you look for resin you will find first and you know I have a whole bunch of stuff in uh, in my influencer store but let's find the resin okay so number one you will find the the resin and kits so this is one of them and in the resin and kits you'll have first i did put here um a small um, explanatory thing and then the first ones are listed the two-part resins and then you'll have the uh, UV resins unfortunately I did not find on Amazon a soft two-part resin the only store online that I could find soft two-part resin and they don't have it all the time it's Sophie and Toffee that's in France but um, so first are listed the two parts then I do have some uh, fiberglass and polyester resin and then comes the UV resin the first one listed is the hard one and then uh, there's one set of both hard and uh, soft and then are the soft ones uh, after which are some tools and I presented to you before the um, uh, sticky gel pads that are awesome whenever you want to, to work with resin especially resin in bezels in open bezels and then the one use um, uh, syringes that are so awesome and then the blunt uh, needles also there are some tiny actually let me go grab them I had to order another pack because you know that thing with when you cannot find something and then you reorder it <laughs> and then you find it so these are the little levels that are super uh, useful whenever you use the two-part resin that has to sit uh, usually overnight just to make sure that it is perfectly um, a straight level okay uh, then cups and all kinds of other things for mixing I suggest that you go to your local dollar store and get lollipop sticks or of course you can order them online and then a whole bunch of uh, little uh, disposable cups to mix the resin um, then all kinds of uh, stirring things and very important I have here two hygrometers why do you need the hygrometers especially if you're using the two-part uh, cast resin you need hygrometers because you need to time properly because when the humidity is higher your two-part cast resin will take a little bit longer 
uh, to cure and then uh, some sets for stirring and stuff a little uh, a, a couple little um, uh, torches that are great for removing the um, uh, air bubbles then some UV lights in flash flashlight and uh, lamps now remember the higher the wattage on the lamp the less it will require uh, curing I myself personally I have this uh, 3499 one uh, that's a 78 watts but there are some that are even larger uh, this one has more watts and this one has more watts uh, this one I think that it would be uh, better than the one that I have as you can see it's 120 watts I chose mine because of the size because that allows me to make larger um, objects or to put in for curing several of them without uh, any problem and there's also the 168 watts and then I put here all kinds of uh, kits that you can get some of them come with the molds and uh, um, some working tools some of them come with all kinds of jewelry um, uh, findings some of them come um, as sets of molds some of them come with inclusions so I thought that it would uh, help you then I have the resin pigments which I placed separately than the powders and pigments because these are special for um, resin now one thing that you have to keep in mind if you're talking about regular two cast resin you will have these and uh, these I placed them first on the list exactly how I placed the um, the resin so these the first ones are for two parts cast resin and in order for your resin to not uh, start curing before you're finishing setting it up mix the pigment in one of the parts do not first mix the two parts and then place the pigment because it might start hardening before you're done so mix the pigment in one of the parts mix it really good and then put the two parts together and then come the UV resin pigments one thing that's very important for you to uh, be able to discern which of them it is and why is that because in regular two cast you can use any kind of pigment and any kind of inclusion but in the UV resin you need to make sure that whatever pigment or inclusions you're using is transparent enough to allow the light to go through otherwise your resin will not cure if you have an obstacle and the light cannot go through and I'll show um, in a second here why also it's important to get whenever you're doing inclusions it's important to get a mold for resin that is fairly translucent itself because that will allow you to uh, flip it over and cure on the other side before removing your piece from the mold but uh, UV resin pigments um, they are in dark bottles compared to the ones that you see uh, here for the two parts that are in regular colored transparent bottles so you can see the pigment the ones for UV resin will be in dark bottles because most of these pigments uh, they are uh, also mixed in a little bit of resin so you might even have colored resin the only ones that are not in dark are the um, resin obsession and the casting craft but if you notice here it says transparent so you can safely uh, use these and I used actually the amber resin uh, when I did uh, one of my tutorials on how to make uh, for amber with for filigree and then we have the inclusions and powders again very important how you choose your inclusions and powders I showed how to make um, earrings using these pretty dragonfly like things then all kinds of uh, I showed how to use the magnetic powders 
um, if you remember I posted uh, for Labradorite uh, using UV resin and then um, the powders that are opaque obviously work only with a two parts resin and then all kinds of other inclusions I showed you how to use uh, the um, um, iridescent cellophane and uh, uh, dichroic film and then all kinds of other tiny inclusions we worked at one point with these little um, jellyfish and many 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 other inclusions now to get back to our uh, thing so everything that you find here will be either on my Amazon Influencer store and also Trish from Polyclay Play has some. So I'm sorry that you fell. Hi Skywalker, hi Wendy, hi Hirasuna, hi Lianka, hi Karen, hi Sandra, hi Mirinia. Okay, I hope you get better, Wendy not Wendy Martnat, sorry uh, so what I'm going to use are these that by themselves they are fairly um, uh, cheap to get I have several of them because these will allow to create some really neat uh, cabochons using all kinds of stuff so let me I don't want to use one that's too big because I don't want to waste a lot of material but on the other hand I don't want to use one that's too small and you'll not be able to see what I'm doing uh, so I think I'm going to first use this because I'm going to work uh, like not a very thick thing so, so I can use this and I'm gonna use this one if need be I can obviously zoom in so let me grab, grab my glasses yeah I was quite upset uh, the last few days of last week because working so much on the garden outside um, got something got in my eye so what I'm doing first is to just place a little layer of fully transparent resin and I don't want I want the layer to be fairly thin so yeah I, as i was saying i've been working outside on the garden and some of these days they were kind of windy and i got something in my eye and i didn't want to interrupt what i was doing to go in and flush my eye so what i did was just to continue to work just blinking as much as i could and as a result I got a sty and that was not pleasant not pleasant at all but it's finally starting to subside so I had one eye about half as open as the other one styes can be very very upsetting so I'm making sure that I cover the whole area of the mold with it and you have to be very careful about that because um, when you do a thin layer you need to make sure that it's spread all over otherwise you might have some issues with it got to bring my lighter but that's fine okay hi Donna long time no see 
Okay, yeah, and they hurt and you cannot see well and all that beautiful stuff. Now, for the other materials that I'm going to use, uh, number one are some flakes of uh, variegated um, metal leaf. And you can find these also on uh, my Amazon Influencer store. This one is not uh, very well found lately. They've had some... Let me try and remove this. I think they've had... They've been hit by the supply chain issues. But uh, variegated, uh, you'll also find in the influencer store, you'll also find some um, sheets of variegated. And what happens with those, the way that the colors are obtained is to simply, um, and they are by flame. If you've ever seen uh, heat patina on copper, this is how... Yes, some of them are not that very good quality, but it's mostly the older ones and uh, the older recipes. <coughs> it happens sometimes with amazing uh, cast. So this one is uh, the Shabin Flakes. You see they are variegated and they are some gorgeous colors. But as I said, why I prefer these to the Cosmic Shimmer is because if you notice, the these ones, the flakes are way larger. And they'll have all kinds of pretty names. But um, it's all luck if you have the luck to get them. Now, my next for my next thing, I'm going to use a little bit of top gel because I want a very thin, thin, thin to act, to act, thank you, to act mostly like a, like a glue for my next step. And you can take this out of the mold to do this, but I can do it while it's still in the mold. I don't have issues with it. So this one definitely, this technique definitely requires uh, an extra layer on the front if you want everything to be nice and properly cured so my next thing will be to use a few flakes I need to be very careful and not to actually let me use the other one because this one I didn't even open it yet. Need to, as I was saying, I need to be very careful and not to uh, sneeze now because if I do this, will go all over the place. Okay. I'm simply placing a few of these here and some of them do require a little bit of unfolding if you need me to zoom in let me know if you have any problems seeing what I'm doing here something that's too big
and you must make sure that you leave enough room between the flakes grab another And you can do this with regular flakes, but trust me, it doesn't look as pretty as with the variegated ones. Hey. Tiny, tiny one. You can also use black, Oops. as I've uh, you'll find in the metal leaf and foils. I did manage to get a few out but you can find even black uh, metal foil I'm trying to show to open one of these to show you I think I got the black but I'm not entirely sure oh come on open already Goodness. These are so thin. I don't want to take it out of the package because then they start spreading all over the place in the drawer. Anyway, this is black. This is black. Uh, black. Uh, I need to take one out show you it's black a metal leaf let me get one right in this corner here I'm going to leave this in the lamp for a few seconds, not too much. Hi Karen. So it is very important uh, to make sure that you have those very, very uh, thin, your layers, otherwise you'll get a very bulky uh, pendant or earring or whatever you want to to make with it and also it's a good idea to get some um, uh, gel because sometimes and especially as you keep using them your molds will start getting not so shiny so whenever um, the front of your um, piece is not as shiny as you'd want it your best bet is to just put a little bit of gel over it and then put it in the lamp again. Yes, yes it does. I was very amazed when I saw it because I love variegated and I love colored uh, metal leaf. So, alright. Now, I'm going to use two different things for this. So, now I'm going to apply another thin coat of the UV Resin Clear. And again, I'm applying a thin coat, as thin as I can make it and still be sure that I spread it all over, because that's your main concern. To 
not have spread it all over. And another thing, I'm gonna probably have to take a short video and post it on the Facebook because unfortunately the setting that I have for taping and broadcasting and the light that I have, especially because it doesn't have any UV in it, uh, doesn't show all the prettiness of the various glitteries and shinies so these things come up absolutely gorgeous but sometimes because of the light I'm using it will not show very nice not show all its beauty on the camera so I might have to just grab my phone and go in daylight after the live and then I'll post it on uh, the Facebook page. Now, I'm going to use two kinds of uh, flakes. Okay? One will be the crystal opal and the other one will be the aquamarine opal. And you'll see in a second why I'm doing this. So, first, I'm going to do the crystal opal. So what I'm doing is to just punch this here. To get enough prettiness. Thank you, Joyce. Let's mix them in a little bit so that they'll go all over the place. And then on the other one, I'm going to use the aquamarine. which is also relatively transparent. Oops, I just spread a lot of flakes on my tile. Always when I'm working with um, flakes and glitters. There's a lot of cleaning afterwards. Okay, so now let's get this spread all over the place. As I said, this is a kind of like a fire opal look. A bolder fire opal if you want. And one of them will be more in terms of double-sided and one will be one-sided. Okay, so let's get it back in the lab. Now, for the second one, I'm going to use some um, embossing powder and I'm going to use the clear and the gold and they are uh, super fines. So, um, you can use this, you can use also, there are some super tiny uh, beads that can be used for this, but again, you'll have to do um, back and forth absolutely necessary to do a back and forth. In the meantime, for the second one, I'm going to use the blue flash of color shift and the 
emerald flash so these need to be very 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 well mixed in order to get all the flashiness and chameleoness of them for the other one so that's going to be for the second one and for the second uh, technique I'm going to also use uh, colored resin but almost done there and I forgot to grab something hold on I forgot to grab the black gel As I said, one of them will be uh, double-sided and the other one will be one-sided. And you can do this design also in a directly in an open bezel so you won't have to worry about whatever you're getting. Thank you, Kim. Yeah, colors are kind of like my, my thing. All right, so. For the, the next thing, I'm going to take them out. And I'm going to apply one more. I'll have to get them in a close up. Actually, I'm going to apply one more layer of resin here with the flakes and work on the other one while this one is curing just gives it a very delicate and fairy like thing oh goodness I hear you I had a lurcher who loved that And it's amazing to me how they are looking for stinky stuff to roll on. The stinkier the better. Pretty much. Just make sure that your flakes are spread throughout. so you don't have empty spots. And the thing is that these UV lamps come with a mirror tray. So uh, all these, these kind of techniques, you need to make sure that you put them on a mirror tray because that's going to affect how the front of it is cured as well, not just the back. And let's take care of this one. So as you can see, this one is already a little bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of that color shift on it. Yes, they are lucky that they are so cute and that we love them. That's the main thing. So as I said, I'm using all kinds of these kind of stuff from uh, dollar stores that are practically uh, cosmetic uh, little sponges applicators so and 
I'm applying make sure that you don't swipe because when you swipe you're going to leave trails and you don't want trails you just want this to be very nicely spread out a little bit of the emerald flash as well and you need to keep doing this until all the surface is covered with acrylic it's going to be semi-translucent and that's just fine then it's going to have to wait just a little bit uh, to cure and then it will go back in for another layer of resin in the meantime this one is pretty much done it needs a little bit of cleaning on this side and then it will also need um, a little bit more but let me change the zoom the focus so I can show you close up it shows better but nevertheless it will not show well enough unless it is in in daylight This is pretty much it. And as you can see, it, it does give a little bit of a bolder opal effect. So you can try it, and it is double sided. You can apply actually another layer here on the, um, on the naked part, and let's actually do that. I already need to put some resin in here. And then I'll put some resin in the other one. Well, yeah, I, I, as I said, this is a fire opal effect. So. <laughs> yes, please don't forget to leave me likes. And on this one, I'm not going to add more flakes. It's going to be as is. Just going to make sure that it spreads. It spread it all the way over properly. And how, how can you remove those little lips on the sides? Uh, there's two ways you can actually use a little uh, scissor, scissors like uh, the cuticle ones, or you can file, but I'm going to just add a little bit on this one. And yes, they are beautiful and sparkly. And they look so delicate. And the thing is with this one, yeah, it is two-sided because even if uh, the flakes are just on one side, the whole thing is so transparent that it doesn't really matter. You can still see it pretty from both sides. 
just make sure that you feel it all the way to the to that little lip because remember that uh, the regular UV resin is a little bit self doming so it will have the tendency to pull from the edges that's why I've been saying very careful how you fill it with the first thin layer because you might have the surprise that it leaves empty spots on the edge so very careful the the thing with UV resin is that you can get instant results the the bad thing is that there are some things that you cannot use so and that is the the main problem with it otherwise but and there are also some effects that you cannot because you cannot use certain inclusions and certain pigments there are some effects you cannot obtain with UV resin only with uh, the two parts resin hi Shandy yes I do have some too two parts resin and I'll probably make some some tutorial sometime soon okay so this would be the second one and as you can see it looks a little bit different but how I'm going to make it even more different and yeah I can I can add more resin here but uh, I just want to show you we're just gonna go fast with it and just give it some black on the back okay not this one i got the top coat again we want the black And of course you want uh, the back to be perfectly uh, even so I'm not doing that right now so you either uh, file the little lips on the edge or you feel like I did with the other one but what I'm doing right now is just to show you the technique and the the way this effect looks so it's not going to be a perfectly perfect final thing yeah you need to to be careful on that you can sometimes do a good thing with them but not always okay so this would be the the main one as you can see it is double uh, let's refocus So this is the two-sided one. And as you can see the, the effect of opal using it in this contact context, it's very, very strong and you cannot really see the, <coughs> excuse me, the flakes until you turn and the, they actually catch uh, the light and on the side as well so this would be one of them now to start the second one that one I'm going to let it 
go through a couple of cycles so it wouldn't uh, it would be well uh, cured now to start the second one I'm going to use uh, this same thing and again I'm going to apply a thin layer of a little bit more a thin layer of clear to for to get a base so to speak And again, very careful to push it to the edge. And uh, another thing you need to be careful about is because some of these actually the bottom is not even, sometimes it's like this, so you need to make sure that you got the whole thing. And for the second one, I am going to apply also some resin and let's choose this one. Go going to also put some resin on it. Only that this time I'm going to actually color the resin. So this will go pretty much full. but not completely full because you don't want to you don't want it to overflow yeah I'm trying to take a little bit of care of my uh, UV lamp because last evening I had uh, sponsors only live and I used it so much that uh, it started turning itself off it got way too too hot okay then I'm going to use brown I'm going to use yellow. Actually, more like, let me see. Not sure if I have. No, I don't have orange. I could get that amber, but I didn't prepare it ahead of time. So I'm going to just place some yellow here. some white and then grab the toothpick very gently kind of bring the one into the other actually let me zoom in because this is more interesting if it's zoomed in Remember, I do also have the white here, not just the 
some black coloring. Okay, so now this can go in the lamp. Remember that I have a, a flat one and this one. And in the meantime, we can look at this other one. Let me get out of zoom the refocusing and there you go another bolder opal effect and you can see that because I use that uh, color shift on the back it kind of makes the the flake flakes blend um, I'm using and it's on my uh, on the pigments and powders and stuff on the influencer store it is give me just a second and I will go back on uh, it's actually a colored resin so if you go on the resin pigments it is this one. Okay. But I need to, to find another one because as you can see this one went up in price horribly. But you can find and I'm going to look at uh, other ones to, to play some more of this because these weren't this expensive. I only now notice the place the the price so this is a little bit different uh, but I'm going to look for other uh, colored resin not just this one because you can find kits of colored resin and in the in the resin and kits there is also some colored resin I don't know if you noticed it's the in the GDO the topaz and the amber and generally when you go on uh, on the GTO it will uh, sometimes show you other colors like this one has the red which is unavailable these ones are not available I guess it's all the whole supply chain I don't dare to remove them because you never know when they are back on but I will spend uh, this afternoon some time to re because I told you I spend several hours every week on the store to make sure that I keep it updated okay so let's see first how this one came up it's going to be very delicate but uh, you cannot obtain a full um, a full tortoise shell effect unless you use the two-part resin because to get it that dark uh, it's going to not allow the UV resin to but nevertheless it's still a pretty effect let me try and find something white to put it on it still has effect and you can do all kinds of lines I find a dark one to go on 
and it depends it depends what time of the day or of the night you're wearing it because during the day the the dark one will be more visible in the evening the white will be more visible so it's kind of like a double uh, effect now let's go for the second one and let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see better what I'm doing it should be just fine okay so first I'm going to place more resin and not a very thick layer because I want to because I need a <clears throat> I need a medium to work on with my whole inclusion thing So first I'm going to use the sky. I'm going to do the sky first. And that involves me using some of this blue, not purple, blue. Blue. So I'm going to place here a little bit of blue. lighter at the top and a little bit darker at the bottom. If you don't have to, you can just go ahead and use just one. very important I'm going to make some lines like this if you color your UV resin with um, alcohol inks be very very careful and test it first because some alcohol inks have opaque pigment so I'm going to add a little bit of white here And then I'm going to fluff it out to get a cloud like thing. And then next thing to happen is some embossing powder and I'm not going to use a lot of it there should be plenty so I'm using first some gold laterally and then some clear can you use white but it's a little bit iffy okay here I have to be very careful how I'm pouring it I purchased but they weren't as expensive as they are right now when I purchased them so 
Okay, so first I'm going to mix some of the white in the gold. And then just simply mix this clear in here. bring a tad more gold in the clear and in the lamp it goes so yeah if you work a lot with resin and if you need a lot of colors with the resin I do recommend the uh, casting craft because it works great with um, you see, I don't remember if I sold those or not. It works great with UV resin. stuff got all tangled there. Mm, but uh, this was the amber and it's a tutorial. This was the faux amber. And I used the casting craft uh, pigment for it and it worked just fine. So Okay, this one is almost done. It's going to need another layer of resin now, as soon as it's done, before you can see all the all the stuff. But um, I wouldn't mix my own unless you have already dark bottles to put stuff in, because it will if it's not in a dark bottle it will start curing okay so now let's put one more layer of resin and it will be done and we'll have a beach landscape seascape scape thing And as I said, there are so many ways you can do things. And these are just some suggestions. And remember I did other other ones before I showed you how to do the another opal effect using the uh, iridescent cellophane. That was that's not flakes, that's just a sheet of cellophane. And same with this one, it's just differently. And same with this one, it's just differently scrunched. This was another uh, boulder opal effect I did with clay and resin for my sponsors all kinds of stuff all kinds of pretties so once this one is cured we'll take a look at it 
cheers to you too. Yeah, for some reason yesterday in the Monty chat I said that it's the 1st of August. I have no idea why I said it was the 1st of August, especially when I continued with... I might have a 4th of July live tomorrow, but... Uh, oh well. Things happen. Sometimes, in my, in my uh, defense, my eye was still bothering me, so might have been that issue. But yeah. So let's take this one out. And we'll see how it came out. Not as totally pretty as I wanted it, but it still got up pretty. Uh, to be very honest, this kind of effect is better done with cast resin. And if you want, I will work on, uh, on making some of that. Because I have plenty of uh, two parts resin. But uh, especially because this coming week we are supposed to, it's supposed to be super hot. So I'm definitely not going to work in the garden. All I'll be doing will be get out at 6.30 to water and then stay inside. Yeah, piñata is not good for, uh, for resin, for UV resin. They are too opaque. I, I messed up a whole mold because of that. But uh, as I said, the casting crafts like this one and as you can see it's a, a lot of it it's going to be several years before you use all of it this one is very very uh, transparent and it's quite concentrated nevertheless so anyway i hope you enjoyed it and i keep looking don't forget that there is a poll on my uh, community tab and you can go there and tell me what you'd like to see mostly in my lives and I'll I keep checking there so and you can always email me now don't forget to use my Amazon influencer store please 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 and my poly clay play affiliate link because that one allows me to do the uh, giveaways and don't forget to like okay Thank you so much. I don't know, as I said, I don't know if I'm going to have a live for the 4th of July tomorrow. I might. Depends on uh, how I feel and how hot it is. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. If not, I'll see you all next uh, Sunday and have a wonderful 4th of July for the people who are in the U.S. Thank you so much. Bye.